Yeah. All right, so like everybody else, we of course have seen a bunch of the video on Franklin Armory's Reformation, and so we figured we'd, we had a couple questions after seeing everything else online, so we figured we'd come by the booth and ask these guys a couple of follow-ups. So we watched a bunch of the other video that people have put out from this, and there were a couple questions that that left me with. To start with, why 300 Blackout to begin with? 300 Blackout is, is it ready gets not a very good MOA anyways and they are actually easier to cut the projectiles out for. Okay. Um, the main reason why we're going with this is because it's 30 caliber, easier to cut. Um, okay. And, it, and not only that, it improves the accuracy of the 300 blackout. Okay. Are the fins straight or are they curved? Do the fins actually impart a rotation to the projectile? So right now they're straight. Okay. Um, so it's like a rocket ship. A rocket shoot straight. So that's essentially what we have done. Okay. Would you get better accuracy by giving it some rotation, like a Foster Slug? Um, so there's actually three different ways you can stabilize projectiles. Right. There is uh, the spin, which everyone knows of, mm -hmm. and then you have the flared, mm -hmm. drag, which is like a shuttlecock, and then you have fin stabilization. And then the other two stabilizations don't need spin to stabilize them. They okay. fly straight. So we could add spins, but the spin isn't really needed with the fin. Not concerned. Not concerned. Okay. Can you actually make that projectile in 5.56 or is it too we small? Can. We can okay. make it in 5.56. You're not going to have problems like the tail breaking off because it has to be small in diameter? No. Nope. It should be hard enough and it should just work fine. Um, we are okay. still in production with it and we're still working with them and figuring out new ways on how to make different style of projectiles. But okay. right now we're going with this one because it's easy to load, easy to put in. Okay. So. All right. And the, honestly, the biggest question that occurred to me is, what does this do that a brace can't? Why would I, why would I if I could have no rifling and a, a proper stock, we have braces that are, based for all practical purposes, identical to shoulder stocks, and then I could use rifling with a short barrel. You could. What would be the advantage to this? The advantage to this is the stock. Stocks are a lot more comfortable than shoulder blades or stock or shoulders um, braces. Okay. You think there's a substantial advantage to this stock over um, all the braces that are yeah. out on the market? I think that there are a lot, there's a lot more because you can have more adjustability and you can choose whatever stock you want now. There's more stocks out there than there are braces. Okay. So. Are you anticipating any problems with braces and legality? Is this in, is this like a, an option for if ATF decides to change its mind on braces? Or is that um, not something that you were considering? We weren't considering it. Okay. Uh, we we're just giving another option to people of what they can and can't have. And this okay. is uh, definitely groundbreaking. So we're trying to actually inter or bring in tank technology into modern firearms. Which so technology? Tank. Tank. Out of Abram tank. Okay. Abram tanks shoot bow rounds. Right. They're all smooth bore. Um, they do shoot faster you know, feet per second, but you don't need that on the lower level. We're not pushing, you know, a really heavy round out. We're pushing smaller rounds out. Okay. But we don't need, you know, the, the 6,000 feet per second. Right. They're doing that for armor piercing. Yeah. And they're going six miles away. Okay. So, you're not going to go six miles away with this 11 and a half inch barrel. Okay. So. What sort of accuracy do you get? I heard conflicting stories from different videos. So, with videos. our ammunition, you're, we're getting around one MOA. Really? Yeah. Okay. So with other ammunition, uh, standard ball ammunition, we're getting about four MOA at 100 yards. So it's not great, but it is better than a lot of other guns, like pistol caliber carbines out there that don't get that kind of accuracy. Okay. Your MSRP is? So for this exact model, with the binary trigger, it's about 2,000. Okay. If you don't want the binary trigger, it comes about 1,600. Okay. And if you just want the upper, it's about 1,000. Okay. Is there a reason for the price increase? That there, would get you a pretty nice SBR, it, where you can true. have a real stock and real rifling and hit to four or five hundred yards or more. That's true, but we didn't actually increase the price. That's actually how much our SBR goes for. So it's the same price. Um, we actually use all 100% US made parts. Um, all our coatings are anodized or finished with salt bath nitride. Okay. And we try to keep it all in the US and we use high quality parts and metals. So okay. that's why our ARs are, tend to be pretty high. Okay. So It seems like a niche market to pay the same amount for a gun without rifling that you would for the gun with rifling. I it, recognize NFA is a hindrance, 
but it's something that every if you can legally own a gun in the U.S., you can legally own an SBR in the U.S. You just have to file some paperwork. That is true, but we're trying to incorporate different technology to the gun world, something different. Okay. Um, we've always seen spin stabilization for you know years. We're trying to go with a different style of stabilization. Okay, there was a good reason for spin stabilization. There is. It'll do half MOA at 100 yards but then instead back, of four. Back then, during the musket eras, they didn't have CNC machines to cut projectiles to what we can have specific, you know, That's true. make them today. So today we can pop them out a lot faster and cheaper than they could back then. And okay. So today we can use better technology to incorporate into our guns now. So All right. The powder technology wasn't there, and you know the manufacturing technology wasn't there. Now it is. Okay. All That's right. why we're bringing it back. I appreciate you harboring some skeptical questions. Yep. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. So you're getting one MOA with that proprietary ammunition? Yes. At 100 yards? Yes. That's surprising. What if you pushed it off further than that? I realize it's a carbine. Not yet. Okay. So at some point, standard projectiles are going to are, are gonna start tumbling. So with the math and everything there, we're actually having better accuracy, better ballistics um, through CAD than regular spin ammo. No, I mean with standard projectiles. How, yeah. how much are you charging for the specialty ammo? Um, it'll probably be, be close. It'll probably be like 30 cents more than standard ammo. Okay. Because it is going to take a little bit more to make. Oh, that's a massively more expensive projectile. Well, it's not massively more. You're, or if you have a screw machine, screw machines can pop okay. these out like okay. no one's business. Okay. And you don't have to have someone watching it. You throw the metal in, it cuts it out, okay. throws it out, spits it out, you know. Okay. You spit it out overnight with no one watching it. And I suppose 300 is expensive to begin with. In 5.56, five, five, you'll yeah. be getting a lot of people dumping Tulama through the gun. And that stuff's yeah. going to, that and 300, that's going to tumble at some point because it's neither spin stabilized nor fin stabilized. Yeah. So Do you know where, when? Um, we didn't see too much at 50. It, it's random, but it does tumble. But then again, you have a short barrel rifle and you're shooting somebody at short distances with standard ammo. Now imagine a sideways bullet going through you. Okay. Which one would hurt more? You're actually envisioning this as a practical defensive rifle? Yeah, you can use that as a practical defensive rifle in the home or even, you know, at 100 yards because most people, you don't engage targets past 100 yards. Okay. Have you done ballistic testing to determine when the actual projectile cavitates or fragments or anything like that? We have not yet. you know what the velocity of the bullet is? Of your projectile? Our projectile? Yeah. Standard. But shooting about the same... Okay. Same uh, weight? Feet per second, same weight. I couldn't hear all of your conversation. What's the cost per round? Um, so it would probably be about 30 cents more. Right. But we don't, we're not sure yet. Because um, if we get a large manufacturer on board... Do you have one yet? They'll bring... Um, we are working with them to get this done. And everyone's interested in it because it's, it's different, it's new, and there's so much we can do. So, you know, with, with what you look at Abram Tanks, they have thousands of designs for different styles of sabots and projectiles they shoot right. out of them. And they don't, you know, they're not, the only way they're stabilizing it is through fins. Right. <laughs> not quite the same. They have much larger fin surface. They do. Because the fins are much larger in diameter than the body of the projectile. What I'm seeing with this is that, I mean... But then, all, all we're doing is scaling it is down. Is it all copper? Yeah, it's all copper. There's no lead inside? Oh. Yeah. So if you scale everything it's down... Break, break here. Oh yeah, you're gonna get when that hits too. gel, it's going to break and break, snap break, right well, in the middle. break right here, but then you might get... Yeah, you probably will. Your barrier penetration is going to be shit. Barrier penetration will be poor, yeah. Um, because huh? sectional density on that is going to be so, not good. So what's the no. deal? But we do but have I don't different think. ideas of getting it. Honestly, I would never be willing to uh, yes, consider this as a practical yes, rifle because of the accuracy. I, um, we I'd like well, rifle one minute, though, yeah. I would. Yeah. I'll be honest. I'm dubious about that. I'd have to see it myself. Yeah. Just, well, we'll get it out to people. If, if you guys are interested in actually doing it, testing, I can get you guys. Okay. You know, I would test this. One. Yeah. I would. And test then, you know, we want more people to test it. And okay. Uh, we understand this. You know this. The people, you know, worried about it, but it is new. It's something different. 